Well, Alex, uh, welcome back to Geraldton. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Sort of don't get much back into town much these days. No, nah, probably once a year. And yeah. normally it's only for about two or three weeks, but anytime we have to come home, it's beautiful. Yeah, so you've got a little window this time to yep. uh, sort of get home and meet the family and all that. So yeah, so I mean, it's short but sweet, but it's good to get home and see the family and friends and get to the beach a little bit and enjoy the beautiful weather that Joe has to offer. So, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, so you're a truly local because uh, I've known the Dukas family for four generations. So, wow. So, um, uh, when I was a young bloke on the farm, we had fires. Your great grandfather was the chief of bushfire control officer yep. for, for the Greenwich Shire yep. in those days. So that's uh, that's how I sort of first ran into the Dukas family, and then and then your grandfather had that earth moving gear, and we did, did a bit of stuff work for us on the farm. And that. He did, so, yeah. So, yeah, so it's it's four generations that I've known of. So it's certainly a local, and uh, uh, we as a community, we're very proud of you. Uh, your achievements and everyone sort of watches from afar so yeah it's been good i definitely come home and feel the love and support from everybody and it's been, it's been awesome yeah so um so growing up in Geraldton, um basketball but it would have been other sports you were playing as well was it i was pretty keen at uh, football growing up yeah. um used to surf quite a bit growing up as well but um basketball kind of took over once it got to that kind of turning point where to choose between football and basketball so yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I think I chose the right right decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what team did you play for in town? I played for Rovers. Oh, did you? Rovers. So followed oh, in dad's footsteps. That's, that's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. I didn't. Did. I didn't think I had too much choice. He kind of put me into Rovers colours <laughs> early on and said, "So you're playing for?" But now Rovers is my club, and yeah. I went down and watched them on the weekend. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. And you play football till what age? Uh, I stopped about 14. 14. Yeah, so. that's kind of where I had to go down to Perth quite a bit for basketball and I started missing a few games here or there and yeah. Dad was like, hey, you got to make a decision and yeah, turned out to be the right one. Make the call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basketball has always been big. So what, what age were you sort of playing basketball? I mean, I was probably running around pretty early on when Dad was playing and Mum was playing. So, yeah. I mean, I really got into it under eight, so probably around six years old and yeah. Um, both my older sisters played and obviously mum and dad played so yeah. it was kind of in the family pretty early and from a young age I was dripping the ball out the front until it went dark <laughs> and mum was calling me inside because everybody was getting annoyed that this yeah. kid was dribbling out the front but um, yeah. yeah it's always been in my family and um, yeah. it's been a very big sport for us. And your club, the home club for basketball? I play for Pumas basketball club. Pumas? Yeah oh, so yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Pumas guy Pumas? until I die. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great! Yeah, um, so um, and you you played you played you did all your schooling here in Geraldton or yeah I uh, I went to the AIS yeah. um in, in year ten so year 10. I stayed here until year ten and then I went over there for two years and finished my year eleven year twelve over in Canberra oh okay um and then I came home for a little bit and then that's when I went, before I went to college so yeah yeah um yeah most of my schooling here was done here in in Geraldton and then. So where did you start? What school were you at? At St. Francis Xavier Primary oh, School. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. So I started at St. Francis and then went across to Nagel. You went to in, Nagel? Uh, in year seven. So I was and there from year seven to year, year yeah. ten. And then then you went to the AOS in Canberra for two years? Two years. Two yep. years? Yep. Yep. So oh. I finished my year 11 and, and year 12 over there. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it's a big move, like pretty young to leave home. And, it was, uh, yeah. Big, big commitment. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit, little bit nerve wracking at first, you know, moving outside of the country yeah. at such a young age. But it was a beautiful support network there, and um, it, I had yeah. a great support network from everyone back home that was always yeah. keeping in touch and, and asking if I was alright and you know, yeah. trying to help out in any way, which was, which was awesome. Oh, okay. And then, and then from I'm just sort of trying to follow the journey. Um, yeah. So then, from the AIS, uh, what happens next? So I was in the AIS and I represented Australia in the nineteens. In yep. the World Cup, um, and then from there I kind of got a bit of a college exposure. Yeah. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to have a few colleges offer me scholarships, and I kind of cut my list down to go to St Mary's um, College in California. Yeah. Um, and I spent five years there. Um, normally you get four years for for a college degree, but I was there during COVID, and they granted us another year oh, um, okay. due to COVID. Our season got cut short, so yeah. I was lucky enough to spend five years there, and yeah. I loved my time. It was, it was an awesome place to be, and Kind of put me in there in the stead to go to where I am at now. Yeah, so that's that's got a great history of Australians 
uh, uh, playing there at St Mary's. Are they called the Gales? Or yes. So, yeah. so that's obviously Irish history or something. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Everyone I asked, what's the Gale? And our little slogan is God's the Gale. So oh, okay. a very Catholic school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, no, it was, it was an awesome spot. Uh, so, yeah, maybe from the Gale. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. but, yeah, a lot of rich history of Australian basketballers. Matthew Delvadova has been through there. Paddy Mills, Jock Landale are three guys that's on the on the Boomer squad right now. And um, Delhi has obviously been a massive one for Australian yes. basketball. And yeah. He always comes back and works out with us when I was over oh, there. So oh, does he? I'm pretty close to him now. I get to call him uncle. So oh. <laughs> I call him Uncle Delhi. And it's, yeah, it's been a great relationship. He's kind of helped me on the court and off the court. And yeah. um, he's always he's always a phone call away and helping me out for anything. Done or anything, so. so there's a, definitely a legacy there of Aussies going through the system and uh, going through St Mary's. So how big is that? Like th- that that uh, that level of basketball. Just explain to us what it sort of uh, you know the size of the crowds and all that. Kind of thing. Yeah, so. it's it's actually it's a whole other world. Yeah. I mean, college basketball in America is is incredible. I mean. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of support behind it. The whole the whole country of, the, of America really loves it. But some places you go to, there's 20, 25,000 people in there, and Jeez. they're not really rooting for you. So I mean, <laughs> it's a it's a pretty crazy environment to be a part of. But some of my most memorable and fun games in basketball have been in college basketball and in places where you know the whole crowd is dressed in white, and you walk in and you're in blue, and it's like wow, like it's it's a real kind of like be where your feet are and, and take a moment to t- take it all in, but yeah. um, it's massive. I mean, we went to the NCAA tournament, which is uh, the best 64 teams uh, in college basketball out of 368, I think there is. So it's pretty tough to make it there, and we're lucky enough to be there three years in a row, which is which is awesome, and um, that's kind of the biggest stage in college basketball. And yeah. to experience that as a you know, kid coming from a small town in Belgium, <laughs> yeah. it's, sometimes you're going to sit back and, and understand what, where you are, and can I take it all and not take it for granted. So. No, just appreciate for sure. the journey and that. So, yeah. so is it full time basketball at college basketball level, or do you yeah. get a chance to study or do? Yeah, so normally uh, we'll do like a, a training in the morning and then we'll finish at eight, nine o'clock in the morning and then we'll go to class from nine till two and then go back to training at 3.30 and have a few sessions in the afternoon. So. Um, a regular day is pretty full on yeah. um, between, you know, you're doing your schoolwork and trying to do as much training as you can and, yeah. and fit it all in. But um, it's all part of the, all part of the journey yeah. and all part of the experience. So it was awesome. And there's a big team, like coaches and all that behind it all. Yeah, like I think so. we had about 10 coaches on our, on our, on our support staff. And, um, and then there's, you know, your weights coaches and your, your nutritionists and recovery yeah. coaches. And, you know, it kind of goes down the list pretty long and then, They've got things called managers who, um, who are students who are enrolled at the school and they're and they're learning, but they uh, they help out with the basketball team and it looks good on their resume. So uh, we've okay. got about six of those guys that help out and with your rebounding and, and your training schedule and all that sort of stuff. And then there's people when you're traveling that do all the, the luggage and the hotels and everything. So it's <laughs> it's a it's a pretty big organization and um, there's so many helping hands around that yeah. you know there's never any problems or anything you have to do in your own it's kind of all taken care of which is cool yeah. so the season does it go for how long does the season yeah it goes for? from about october through to march um so it's a good you know little while and yeah um the hardest part is probably the pre-season before the, is before the season it's starts like sports yeah. You're right yeah so <laughs> they kill you and they, you survive don't you? <laughs> they do it's kind of survival of the fittest and you know, if you can't hang on, then you'll be kicked to the side. So yeah. it's pretty, uh, it's pretty grueling, pretty cutthroat. But um, I guess it's important to get to where you want to go and yeah. kind of build that resilience and mental toughness that is big within everyone, whether it's sports or general life. So yeah. um, I learned a lot of lessons about myself, and not only as a player on the court, but off the court as well. So yeah, yeah. Really so it wouldn't be any time to muck up in that with, with there the, isn't, with no. the training and no. study and. You fit in a couple of pies here and there, <laughs> but for the most part, it's pretty basketball and yeah. you know, pretty much studying. So games on. Yeah, so. but it was awesome. I mean, I got to live in a beautiful part of California, and yeah. I was about forty-five minutes outside of San Francisco. Oh, okay. um, so I got to visit that, and you yeah. know, go to Alcatraz and kind of yes. visit my way around the Bay Area in California, yeah. which is which is awesome. And I mean, I had teammates and their families, which would let me stay with them and you know oh, kind of okay. visit and they would show me around be a little tour guide for me so <laughs> it was awesome I got, I got to see a lot of california and even a lot of america just yeah. traveling to games and yeah. 
yeah. um, and whatnot. Really great. And then, of course, leading on from there, now that, that the big moment you sort of got picked up by Oklahoma City. Yep. So in Oklahoma State, I guess it's then sort of the plain states, aren't they? There's sort of about three or four states that's sort of in the middle yeah. of America where it's uh, a lot of grain growing, there's a lot of livestock sales here. I've been looking at that, yeah. so it's, it's sort of quite a bit of a rural thing. There's a lot of oil fields in that area. Yeah, so. I mean, it's going to be perfect to me. I come from a small town and <laughs> yeah. got a lot of grain growing and, <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. So um, I've been there for about a week or two weeks before I came home. Oh, um, okay. A little bit more of an introductory and a, yep. a visit. And um, there wasn't a whole lot there, but I mean, I'm used to being from a small town and, and yeah. kind of locking into my sport and not having any distractions. So yeah. Um, It'll be a good fit. I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so oh, we all are too, you know. We sort of, we, 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 everyone's sort of keeping an eye on it and, and seeing uh, your yeah. progress from afar. So yeah. it's really good. So once again, look, look, thanks thanks for coming back and uh, having a chat with us. For um, sure, thanks for having and, me. And uh, well, the, the city is really proud of you and uh, what you've done. And uh, we wish you all the best for uh, Oklahoma. We'll be watching. Pleasure. Thank you so much. All Thanks right. for having me. No worries. Thank awesome. you.